Many gardens have what is known as a sundial and here we have one which is a horizontal sundial and it has a stick or pointer called a gnomon and this is where the sun when it rises in the east or when it rises to the most north of east which will be around the time of the day is longest okay in on in where i live in temperate northern latitudes that, that'll be, be the third week of june normally and you'll find the sun rising here low in the horizon the shadows falling here from this stick is falling on the number five telling telling me it's 5 a.m in the morning and as the sun starts to rise and move around you should be looking at the shadow here on the actual gnomon and as the sun's rising here the time is changing as you can see as the hours are advancing there we are that roman numeral nine then ten etc and i'm moving the torch around to show you what's actually going on then when the sun gets highest in the sky okay it is not overhead where i live in northern latitudes it'll reach the number 12. at noon the sun will be at its highest in the sky and it will be on the meridian point which is due south and that's where the sun is highest in the sky the shadow stick itself has to be lined up so it would point where where i live to the north celestial pole now that is a star around which all the other stars appear to rotate and if you have an, a horizontal sundial such as this one where this pole here does not point exactly to the pole star you're going to have to tilt it upwards using say for instance a brick or stones underneath your sundial so that this pole here lines up with the pole star that way you will have the correct angle between this and the horizontal plate in order to make it more accurate here we have the shadow falling here where, where the sun is due south and you'll notice that the shadow itself um, tells you where north is that's the shadow okay now as the sun begins to move to the west the time's moving on and we have 1 p.m and the sun starts to get lower and lower but you can still read the time here from the gnomon or rod and the starts, time starts to change 3 p.m and the shadows here 4 p.m etc and then the sun is going to start sun starting towards setting okay sundials often have calibrations on them for each date for instance this one for january which is the month which is about to begin because i'm filming this on new year's eve it tells you on which particular date you have to apply corrections to the time which the sundial reads and these corrections here tell you whether you have to add various minutes or as i go around the year you'll see on some months uh once i reach april whatever those minutes are on the dates you have to subtract them okay and that is because the, a sundial does not follow exactly the clock which we follow the 24-hour clock the sun itself does not follow exactly that so corrections have to be applied here on the dial here it tells you how many minutes you'd have to add from whatever the shadow was reading of course this horizontal sundial only gives you a very rough approximation of the correct time but the idea behind them is that as part of your garden if you have one of these it is a good ornament to have but it's also useful to learn something about astronomy for instance here you'll find that once you reach February, which is early February, say February the 3rd, you have to actually add 10 minutes on to whatever the shadow says to get the time. And don't forget the other issue we have is that there is also no things known as daylight saving time. And in spring, the clocks go forward and in autumn or fall, the clocks go back. And that also affects how you are going to adjust your sundial. Of course, you could always, to make adjustments for that, um, make just make the adjustments off the shadow itself you'd have to make a note of that of, of the days when when it changes to make corrections okay this the actual sun moves in a particular way so that once you reach months such as october towards the end of october and and begin and in november you're having to subtract 20 minutes from the shadow uh time from the clock and i will briefly explain why this happens and it's, no, and it's due to something called the equation of time.
The reason why a sundial is not accurate just by reading the shadow is because of the motion of the Earth around the Sun itself. And the Earth, being a planet in the solar system itself, does not go around the Sun in a circular orbit. Instead, it traces out the shape of an ellipse. And I've drawn this as a rough approximation here. This would be the orbit of the Earth. It's an ellipse or oval, okay? Imagining it going around anti-clockwise. Every once time it goes around, that's a year, okay? But it's even more complicated than that, in that a scientist known as Johann Kepler discovered that the Earth itself has one point in its orbit where it's closest to the Sun, that's called point P, and then as it travels around in its orbit, there's another part on the ellipse here, which is point A, where the Earth is furthest from the Sun, okay? And this is without even thinking about the fact that the orbit of the Earth is affected by the fact that the axis of the Earth is tilted. The Earth itself has a tilt of 23 and a half degrees. If we consider that this ball here represents the Earth when it's at point P, when it is closest to the Sun, then we might consider that this top stripe, these stripes going around the ball here, this would be the Northern Hemisphere, and those below the blue line representing the equator would be the Southern Hemisphere. This point here, when the Earth is closest to the Sun, is actually the point at which it's winter in the northern hemisphere and sunlight striking the earth from here although it may be closer to the sun you would easily discover the fact that the amount of sunlight hitting because it's at an angle is spread out over a, a wider area and therefore less radiation is reaching that area per meter squared but for the area of the sun where it's hitting south here of this point here which is the equator more sunlight per given area of meter squared is hitting the sun and there you have the southern hemisphere summer and the northern hemisphere winter which where I live at the moment is currently going through winter but there are other points to note also if I take the model away. The important thing that Johann Kepler discovered was that even though the Earth is moving in an ellipse around the sun and so are other planets moving in an ellipse if you measure the area that it sweeps out in a given time, the area being represented by Y, he said that planets sweep out equal areas in equal time. Okay, And the, the, the problem that this presents to the sundial is the fact that when the Earth is moving here from this point here to this point here, where it then suddenly becomes closest to the sun on this ellipse, it's moving at a faster orbital speed. So during, say, the winter months, and particularly at John, January the 2nd, around January the 2nd, um, the approximate orbital speed of the Earth is at its maximum. That's because the Earth is tracing out equal areas in equal time, so which means that this point along here, the ellipse here, is a much further point. It's moved, moved faster along this point of its orbit. When you reach the opposite point of its orbit, which is the where it then becomes summer in the northern hemisphere, the Earth is also sweeping out the same area in a given time. So area X, represented by this triangle here, is meant to be equal to area Y by Kepler's laws. However, that means that the Earth, Earth's orbital speed then reaches a minimum. As you can see, it's moving a smaller amount along the ellipse than it moves at this point here, even though the areas X and Y are the same. And here, at point A, the Earth is at its furthest point from the Sun. However, this represents the point of the Earth's orbit where the northern hemisphere, if you look at my little model here, is pointed towards the Sun to its maximum extent. And the angle which the, sun, which the Earth is tilted, this 23.5 degree angle, means that the northern hemisphere is pointed towards the Sun at, at its maximum extent. And so more solar radiation is able to fall north of the equator than south. And, you're, and you've got summer in the northern hemisphere, but conversely, the southern hemisphere is tilted away and you have winter. Here we have another reason why shadow sun, sundials don't tell the time accurately. It's because the orbital speed of the Earth varies. At this point where the Earth is coming closer to the Sun, it, it moves at a faster orbital velocity going around the Sun, as represented by the area Y here. So between the point here where the Sun is highest in the sky, where the match is points it, because the Earth is moving faster as the Earth is rotating as well, it mean, means it takes longer 
for this, for this stick here, which is here, the shadow stick, to get back to where it was the day before, because the Earth is moving, uh, uh, sweeping out a, lo a longer distance between each day, which means for, you have to apply a correction represented by the angle B before the shadow then comes back to the same place that it was the day previous because this distance represented from here to here is longer than when the same earth at its furthest point from the sun here is still rotating as in this way because it only moves a shorter distance but the earth is still rotating at the same rate 23 hours and 56 minutes the correction applied is a lot smaller in this case here this amount here represented by angle a which is a smaller correction and you'll a sundial in the northern hemisphere where I live has to, has to be placed correctly so that this gnomon or shadow stick has to point exactly to the north celestial pole which is represented uh, very approximately by the pole star but very close to it. If, it's, if this angle isn't your correct latitude you have to adjust it so it is. You could put say stones under the sundial such as this to tilt it so that the whole of the sundial points directly at the pole star or adjust the angle of this obviously it's easy to tilt it or of course if it rotates off you might it might be able to tilt it on the way it rotates possibly and tilt the dial so it's at the correct angle but you'll see that there are lots of numbers on on most garden sundials and they tell you how what corrections to be applied in terms of minutes from what you actually read on the sundial for each date and you'll find for instance that say around um, January the 24th you're supposed to add eight minutes that means whatever the shadow here of Gnomon reads on the time you're supposed to add about eight minutes this is a very rough sundial it's just a horizontal sundial but even so some of, some of them are far more accurate than this one you'll find there are other points on the orbit of the earth around the sun where instead of having to add minutes you have to subtract minutes and that is because the, earth, the sun itself as it appears in the sky um, goes along a plane which is known as the ecliptic which is also a plane in which the zodiac signs are found, the signs of the zodiac but the complicated thing is that the, uh, that means that the sun itself does not rise and set at the same points in the sky. In the summer or more specifically on the summer solstice when the sun rises earliest and sets um, latest, if you like, the sun will rise at its most northerly point from east, say here, and will set also at its most northerly point west, very close here to northwest. This of course depends on your latitude, but here I'm talking about latitudes close to where I live, around 50 to 53 degrees north. Okay, And the trouble is in winter, the sun will rise south of east here, it's represented by south east, and will set here south of west. So the sun itself will not not only uh, be closer to the horizon in winter, but it would also rise and set from different points on the horizon. And that is means by which the corrections have to be applied to a sundial, but also the same reason why henge stones were used as sighting stones, most specifically for the winter solstice, which was when the sun would rise to, to its most southerly point from east and set to its most southerly point from west. If you imagine that, that it's now summer in the northern hemisphere and the earth is at its furthest point away from the sun on its ellipse, if you're on the north pole where uh, my top finger is here and you were standing on the north pole, what you would actually see overhead would be what is known as the pole star. It's a star which would be directly overhead as you looked up at an angle of 90 degrees and just by chance it happens this happens to be a star at this point and at the moment that star is known as Pol Polaris and even though the earth is rotating and also going along its orbit that particular point on the north pole is always pointing and looking upwards towards a star in the sky so whatever point you've got in the earth's orbit as it's turning it's always 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 pointing to that particular point up in the sky known as the pole star there are two points in the Earth's orbit around the Sun where although the Earth's orbit is tilted on its axis of 23 and a half degrees, the Northern Hemisphere and Southern Hemisphere both receive the same amount of solar radiation per meter squared. This is the equinox. 
and there is one in the spring when 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of night time will follow in both northern and southern hemispheres and then an opposite point of the Earth's orbit when the Earth has reached this point of its orbit and gone around the Sun again there will also be the same point where equal amounts of radiation hit the northern and southern hemispheres and you have another equinox so that's equal day and equal night despite the fact that the Earth is tilted on its orbit so the, they are known as the equinoxes equal day and equal night